Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of Prometheus University. I am Ike Okiamian, and this is part seven in our nine part series on bending stress analysis and design. And in this part, we'll be giving you an introduction to concrete beams, reinforced concrete beams, I should say, to be specific. So what we will be doing in this video is similar to what we did in the first video when we came up with the concept of distribution of bending stresses, the tension and compression couple, the lever arm between the tension and the compression, and then define the section modulus with which we were able to determine the bending capacity of any cross section that we're given, right? Those parameters and that concept still applies for a cross section that is made with concrete. However, concrete is weak in tension. Hence, the moment capacity of a concrete cross section is greatly limited by the tension strength, right? So the moment where the concrete will crack pretty quickly. Hence, concrete is reinforced using steel. The steel is assumed to take all the tension while the concrete takes the compression. That is why we would expect that coming up with the tension and the compression couple and the stress distribution would be different in this case than a homogeneous material because we are using one material to take the tension and another material to take the compression and both of these have different modulus of elasticity. Hence, they have a different strain response at different stresses, right? So let's get into that. We will be developing that in this part. So let's consider our typical smiley face bent beam. And we show here reinforcement in the tension region. Note that in service loading, during the service loading of this beam, the concrete in the tension region is all cracked, right? And that region is basically held together by the tension in the reinforcement. So let's consider the cross section, right? Cross section has a certain depth from the top to the reinforcement and a width. The green line here represents the neutral axis. I will advise that you go back and watch the first four videos or at least mention that knowledge of the material in the first four videos is assumed here and we're going to quickly go over some basic ideas here so now we look at the strain diagram so we expect that there will be a linear transition from the tension zone to the compression zone right so the compression at the top to the tension in the bottom we have a linear strain transition linear strain diagram which is empirically verifiable however due to the reasons we've con we've already considered right the idea that we're taking tension with a different material and the tension region of the entire beam is cracked as far as concrete is concerned right and also we're using two different materials that will have a different stress response to the strain that's introduced so while we have a linear strain right a linear strain distribution we're not going to see a linear stress distribution now empirically what we find is this let's consider the compression zone we see there that the stress distribution is not linear and this is what we notice empirically it has a shape similar to what is shown here fc at the top there represents the maximum compressive stress at the top fiber of the concrete and if we consider from the neutral axis, the green line below, into the tension region, the tension zone, we recall that the concrete is cracked and assumed not to have any tensile resistance. Hence, the tension is concentrated at the point of the reinforcement as shown there. And T is for tension equals FS times AS, which is the stress in the steel, times the area of the steel. So this is the stress distribution that we have that we notice empirically and what we assume in terms of designing concrete right if we notice the compression region it is a complex 
stress distribution. Not easy to work with, not easy to find the, the integral of and find the centroid of and operate with. But our friend Whitney came up with the equivalent stress distribution. He discovered an equivalent stress distribution called Whitney's equivalent stress block. The block has an amplitude, a stress amplitude of 0.85 of F of C. F of C being the max stress in our empirical distribution. And it has a depth of A. A is less than C, the distance to the neutral axis, and it has a relationship to C equals 0.85 C. Basically, A is equals to 0.85 C. And what Whitney did is take a complex compressive stress distribution and created an equivalent stress block which has a rectangular shape and can be therefore easily worked with in terms of finding the lever arm and defining the tension and compression couple with which we analyze bending moment in cross sections right so speaking of that Let's go ahead now and explicitly define what our tension is. For example, which we've already talked about, the, air, the stress in the steel times the area of the steel, right? And what is our compression? Our compression is 0.85 FFC, right, which is the amplitude, times the depth A, which is equal to 0.85 C, right, times the width of the beam, okay? Now we know from equilibrium, similar to what we did in our first video, by the way, is what we're doing now is we're going through and defining the tension and the compression and the lever arm between them and seeing what could be said about predicting moment capacities and analyzing beams given certain parameters. The tension is equal to compression we know due to equilibrium, right? Static equilibrium tells us such. Therefore, this implies that FSAS is equal to 0.85 F of C times A times B. Right? Basically, all I've written is the tension is equal to the compression. Now, we know that the moment right, that this cross-section is experiencing is equal to the tension or the compression multiplied by the lever arm between the two. Okay. Now, the center of gravity, if you will, right, the center, the centroid of that stress distribution of the compressive stress distribution is located a distance half of a right half of a from the top of the concrete so we have a level arm between the center of the tension to the center of the compression of d minus a over 2 correct so now we have the tension and the compression defined and we have the level arm between them and we can say that the moment right is equal to Fs As times D minus A over 2 or using the compression times D minus A over 2 basically saying tension or compression multiplied by the level arm, right? So if we look at the second equation for moment, we see that we can determine a maximum moment by simply maxing out the stress in the steel. If we change Fs, the stress in the steel, to Fy, meaning the maximum stress that the steel can take before it yields, the yield strength, right, yield stress of the steel, we automatically get the moment capacity of the beam, at least moment capacity defined as yielding of the steel, right? Conversely, we can do the same with the concrete crushing. F prime of C is the maximum compressive stress, the stress beyond which the concrete crushes. Using these parameters, changing the F of C to F prime of C and changing FS to FY gives us a way of determining the moment capacity of a given cross section of concrete, right? Knowing the F prime of C, which is basically like 4,000 for 4,000 psi concrete, or 60,000 psi for 60,000 psi steel, right? We know the area of the steel and so on and so forth. We could come up with a moment capacity of that concrete cross section. So let's ask the question directly. How would we actually go about this operation? So again, we have a concrete cross section of a certain depth defined as D, a width B, right? We have an area of steel, let's say number four rebar, 
and it's 60 KSI steel so we know the FY and 3000 PSI concrete so we know the F prime of C as well and we say what's the moment capacity right we say well let's just go ahead and use our equation equation 2 FY AS multiplied by D minus A over 2 right oh but we don't have A the depth of the compressive stress block the depth of Whitney's equivalent stress block in order to do that we need to go to equation 1 right so we have two equations here because we have two unknowns and in equation 1 by some simple manipulation of equation 1 we can find a you know being asfy divided by 0.85 f prime of z multiplied by b right so we go to equation 1 and we solve for a and then we can solve equation 2 for the moment capacity and that is the basic way in which you would go about analyzing a beam if you already have these parameters known further right we can know something about the strain the elongation of the steel which is important because concrete is designed in such a manner to allow for a significant amount of elongation in the steel so that the concrete failure mode is ductile instead of brittle we're not a go we're not going to go too deeply into the design philosophy of concrete beams this is here basically an opportunity to get introduced to the tension and compression couple the parameters that are used for the manipulation of moment capacities and such right also we're going to look at how to define the strain in the steel right now so we know that the concrete is crushed and we know the crushing strain of concrete at 0 0.003 is the maximum strain compressive strain that concrete can take before it crushes right so we have that on there and having solved the equation for a we also know what C is because we can back solve for C using A, right? So we have parameters to define our strain diagram. We have C at the top, we have D minus C at the bottom as shown, and then we have the strain on the compression side of things being 0 0.003 because the concrete has crushed because we have reached F prime of C because we're looking at basically a scenario where we have maxed out the moment capacity of the concrete right so again what we've done is we have a certain cross-section and we're saying what is the maximum bending that it can take so the steel will yield the concrete will crush and then we can see how much elongation has gone on in the steel which is basically based on the depth of the concrete right as we can imagine based on the depth of the concrete cross-section so if we see there from similar triangles in our strain diagram we can define right we can define the strain in the steel right so now not only do we have a way of determining the moment capacity of a given cross-section we can also say at the at the maximum moment we'll also have this amount of elongation in the steel because again as written here in item number three concrete is designed such that there is sufficient elongation in the steel there are other aspects of the design as well such as a maximum steel that you can put in there and this is to make it such that you don't get brittle failure right so that the steel yields before the concrete crushes we do not want to put too much steel in there okay because we want the steel to yield before the concrete crushes so we get a ductile as opposed to a brittle failure mode we also have a minimum amount of steel that we want to put in there we don't want to put too little because we want the reinforced concrete cross-section to have a greater moment capacity than the moment capacity of the bare unreinforced concrete in other words the moment capacity 
of the concrete itself before it cracks, we want that moment capacity to be exceeded by the moment capacity of the reinforced section. And one last word on the complexities of concrete design. So we've just noted that if we have a particular cross section, depth, width, area of steel, right, that we can get the moment capacity. We can basically analyze that beam to determine the moment capacity. However, right, what if I have a particular load? I'm doing an analysis on my structure. I come up with a load, right, 50 thousand foot pounds let's say right and I need to design a beam that takes 50,000 foot pounds how do I go about doing that how do I select steel right you will find that it is difficult because in order to determine how much steel you need you need to know the depth of the compressive stress block right and in order to know that you need to know the area of the steel, right? So in equation one, in order to get the depth of the compressive stress block, you need the area of the steel, right? But if we're trying to determine the area of the steel because we have a maximum moment, then you, you get the point. We have two equations, two unknowns, and in order to solve them, you need to solve a quadratic equation. There are tables provided for you whereby if you have a maximum moment that you're solving for and you select a certain depth and a width of the concrete right you can be given an amount of steel that will meet the design criteria right basically the amount of steel that it give you that moment capacity given as a ratio of the concrete area right but as i mentioned that's taking a step more into design right but here we are trying to elucidate the concepts and the parameters associated with bending in a concrete cross section. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for listening to another edition of Prometheus University. Once again, I'm Ike Ogiamian with Prometheus University. If you like what you see, please spread the word and subscribe to our page. We will be bringing some more content to you, a lot more content in more timely uh, or more frequent manner, I should say, in the future. Thank you very much.